Okay, so tonight is going to be the night that we're going to work on a box like this, which is just a wooden box that I've embellished, um, painted with molding paste, used a little bit of glimmer mist, some uh, folk art paint, and then embellished. Oh, you have Spackle. Hi, Bonnie. Um, the girls are just chatting here about the different things that they can use instead of the molding paste. And I'm going to show you a picture of that in just a second um, of what I use. But um, like I said, it's pretty much like frosting on a cake. It's so easy to apply. You can see the different textures. And you are 100% in charge of how smooth or how textured you want to create your box. So this is one that I did. The box comes from either Michael's Joann's or Hobby Lobby. And uh, I always use my 50% off coupon. And this one has a picture in it, obviously. The ones that we're going to be working on tonight do not have a picture. Um, it just has a flat top, kind of like the one I made for BJ that I showed you guys um, last time. And we're going to work on one like that. Okay, so as I said before I started the recording, all you really need is a wooden box to get started. These are just some different sizes. This is the one I'm going to be making tonight. Okay, it's this size. It's a little bit bigger than these. But I just wanted to show you that these are some of the different sizes. Now this was a plain wooden box. I've spray painted this. And as you can see, it's not a very good job of spray painting, and I'm going to tell you why I'm not worried about it. This is what the box actually looked like. Obviously, it was just plain wood. And what I do is I just spray it with a coat of spray paint to get it started. And the reason I do that is because I will then use less molding paste and less paint by doing that. And you'll see what I mean as I show you how I do this. But this is, I just kind of did... Um, I've got four of them going on now here at the same time started because it does take different um, drying times for each and drying time is very important if you try to do things when it's still wet you're gonna ruin it so this is a project that you have to kind of be a little bit patient with and remember um, when you're working on it either have a few of them going at the same time or start another project So you've got something else to work on and you're still feeling like you're getting something accomplished Okay So I'm going to show you real quick Obviously you need a box and as I said mine come from Joann's Hobby Lobby or Michael's with a coupon um, You need some molding paste. This is an 8 ounce jar of Liquitex molding paste and it is uh, it says medium gel. I know there's a light gel and a heavy gel. I like to work with the light. And this just, it's real easy to apply. It looks like cake frosting. Obviously, we've talked about that before. And it's just, it's real easy to use. So we're going to use that. Um, I've advanced up to a new spatula type of a knife, if you can see this. This is from Michael's in their arts, art section. This was only $2.99, and they have different sizes. If you're working on a smaller box, obviously you'd like to have a smaller spatula. And this one has a number on it. It's 1022 if you're looking for it. Now, I, you can use a regular knife um, silverware if you like however you have to remember that when you're working with molding paste when it hardens it's hard like a rock so the best thing to do is as soon as you're done using it you need to get it in some water and I've used this several times and it looks like new as you can see so um, again this I got at Michael's $2.99 and it's in their art department okay so you need one of those I like to have a paintbrush. Do not use the molding paste on a paintbrush. You'll never be able to use that again. So um, I would suggest 
getting the knife or use one of, you know, an old knife from your silverware collection. Um, I'm also going to be using some folk art paint. Now you can use any kind of paint at all. Um, I mean, these are like 77 cents at Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby, so I'm just going the cheapest here. And obviously I'm working in, in browns, so this is, the one that I'm going to be using is metallic antique copper. Okay, so we've got that. I'm also going to be using some uh, Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist, and I'm using Sugar Maple and Bubble Light Green. This is from a Christmas collection, I think, last year, and this one is from the Fall collection, both from last year. And then whatever embellishments uh, you'd like to use as well. So I have an old jar of molding paste, and this is the best way that I've found um, to work with this because it hardens up and you don't want to waste it. Now this is from a previous box that I did and you're going to see how easy it is to do these and it doesn't matter if your colors are going to mix or not because you're going to achieve a different look anyway by using all of these other colors between the the spray paint that you coat with, the paint that you throw on there, and the glimmer mist it makes no difference. So because I'm still using the brown family what I'm going to do, always shake your folk art paint up too because it seems like it all kind of settles. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a nice heaping of this and put it in my other container here. And I can always mix more if I need it. And if I have extra, I'm just going to label it brown and I can save it for the next brown project that I do. Yeah, I'm not sure what the Ustream issues are. Um, I don't have any control obviously over any of that. So, Okay, so now I'm just taking my folk art paint and I'm just going to squirt some of it in there. And I'm not measuring or anything, I can't really tell you. Um, I'm just putting it in there, stirring it up until I like the color that it is. And I'm pretty easy as far as what I like as long as I get that white out of there. So you just really have to mix it up well. So as you can see, it's still kind of light and I want it a little darker. So I'm going to squirt some more in there. I like the browns, the um, fall type colors, every time of the year. So I'm pretty much always working with those. But you can make any color that you like. And these boxes make a really neat gift idea for anyone, that, especially if you're trying to find something for somebody that you just don't know what to get and they're hard to buy for. Because anyone can use these. You can put this in your family room and put your remote control or your clicker, whatever you want to call it in there. You can use it for your glasses like I do. You can keep it by your nightstand, put medications in it, um, note paper, anything. Hi, Cindy. Oh, are you calling us lazy? She said, hello, lazies. <laughs> All right, so. All I'm doing, Cindy, is mixing up some molding paste. So now, again, I'm going to show you these are the two boxes that I had just lightly covered with some spray paint just to get a little bit of color on them. Uh, it's not a big deal that you can see all this wood color still. The reason I did this is because I want to be able to use less molding paste. So I'm going to work on the bigger box, and what I normally do is I work on it like this first when I apply my molding paste. Now, as you can tell, I went right over the price tag. I don't bother taking any of that off because we're covering it up anyway. The only thing that you really want to remember when you're working with something like this, when you're making one of these boxes, especially when you're using molding paste, keep the molding paste off the area of the box that's going to touch together. Because what's going to happen is 
if you get molding paste here around, along any of these edges, you're not going to be able to close this box back up. And the reason being, you're going to create more height here and the box is not going to close correctly. So if you get some on there, just take your finger and wipe it off, put it somewhere else inside the box, it's not a big deal. You just don't want to have those peaks on there. So if you look at this, like what I did, I just painted it smooth with brown. And it's, you know, different shades of brown, so that's okay. All right, so we're going to get started here. And like I said, I always start like this. And I'm going to take you through um, the process of applying the molding paste and then how I do the inside. Two different ways you can do the inside as well. So I just take some of the molding paste on my spatula. And, and it's OK that some of the white is still there because like I said, we're going to be spraying it anyway, so it makes no difference. I just put it on there. And I like to put it on with the curved side so that you can get it on there and then spread with the flat side. Just like you're frosting a cake. That's exactly what this is like. Okay, and you just need a thin layer. If it, if it seems like you don't have enough on there, um, I'm going to show you how you're going to be able to tell. And in fact, I'm going to show you by making it really thin. Okay, there's real thin. If I'm trying to make some peaks, you can see here, let me hold it up. You're not getting a whole lot when you go into it with your spatula. See what we've got there? Kind of looks like it made a heart there too. But let me show you. When you get more on there, like what I had, okay, I'm just going to get it on there. Mix up some of that white that we just saw. You put it, and obviously, depending on how thick you put it, that is also going to determine the drying time. I usually like to put a coat on it and then I leave it overnight and go back to it. Okay, so once I have this on there like that, all I'm going to do is go at it like this. Now look at the peaks. Much different than what we had before, right? So it really depends what you want to achieve when you do this. I usually go straight back and forth, just dropping the spatula in there, and then I go sideways because you don't want it to look like it's all the same. Okay? Now look how fast and easy that was. Okay? Now like I said, this is pretty much done in stages because you have to allow for drying time, but what I like to do is I like to do one whole side at a time. So I like to do the top and the bottom of the box together. The other really great thing about the spatula is with the point there, you can really get into the corner where you need to be. So if I didn't like the way that looked, all I'd have to do is scrape it right back up and throw it back in there and start again. Yes, you can glitter this right now. It's, it's just like paint. It's wet. So you can do whatever you want to do to it right now. In fact, pretty much for a couple hours, because like I said, it's going to take a good amount of time to dry. You can throw glitter on it. Um, you can go ahead and put your embellishments on it, even if you like, while stuff is wet and it will harden like that. I don't like to do that, though. I want it to be placed on top rather than stuck inside of it. Okay, so same thing. I'm just covering all the edges. Now, the reason why the spray paint is a good idea to do in advance, now you can cover it with your folk art paint if you want, but if you, um, if you do the spray paint, you really seem to use less. The reason you need to do that is because this way, if you miss any little spots with the um, molding paste, you're going to be able to be just fine because the um, brown paint underneath is going to show up instead of the plain wood color. So it's fine. You can, <laughs> yes, please don't eat it. This is not frosting. You could probably put it in one of those um, piping bags and put it where you want it to. However, the spatula is really what you need to do here. Okay? So again, it really is very, very easy. Don't be afraid to try this. Um, 
it's easy. Very, very easy. And it's a lot of fun. And the results, you know, people receive one and they think, you know, you spent hours and hours, which you probably do spend hours and hours, but it's on drying time more than it is anything else. <laughs> okay, Sue. I think Sue's like the instigator and everyone else gets blamed. Okay, so I try to do as much of the box as I can because, like I said, the drying time is long. So I wanted to be able to show you how to apply the molding paste, so I'm just going to keep going here. Um, now when you're doing the edges, you can go ahead and try to smooth it on, but I find it a little easier, easier to dab and peek it. Now I do go right over the hinges and everything. I don't I personally don't like it to look two different colors and be able to see that um, gold coming through there. So it's fine to go over the, the clasp at the top and at the um, bottom of the box. You just need to be careful in the hinges of your box and I'll show you that when we get to that. Because if you put the molding paste over it, you want to be able to make sure you crack it open a little bit so that when it dries, the box is still going to be able to open and close. It is like a rack once it sets. Okay, are you guys able to see this okay? Am I working it at a good enough angle? All right, cool. Now I find the best thing to do when I'm working on it and it's getting wet the clasp up at the top where you where you hook it, that's an awesome place to hold on to it. So that's what I do. And as you can tell, I'm working on wax paper. So I just put my finger down on that clasp to hold it, and then it's not going to move and go anywhere, and I can do what I need to do with it. All right. And I hope you guys stay with me the whole time here because I have a couple giveaways for Halloween and then I'm also going to give away a little box like this that I already did. This is parchment paper. Um, not really wax paper, it's parchment paper. Now again, it's okay. Um, I'm not really, it's hard to see so if I miss a little bit, it's okay because I'm going to be able to go back to it as well. So, yeah, you can use wax paper. I just didn't have any wax paper left, so I'm using parchment paper. Now I got to find that little doodad to hold on to, and where am I? This is a fun project to do with the kids, too. Um, I know a lot of you guys have grandkids that you craft with, Bonnie. It's easy enough to let your grandkids do. Just make sure, you know, when they're using it, and I'm not being funny, I'm being serious now. It does look like frosting, so the last thing you want them to do is use it and then get it on their finger and lick their finger. So you do need to be there, obviously. All right, so we got that whole area done. So now I'm going to go to the lid over here. And like I said, you guys, it's okay if I run out of molding paste in this jar that I mixed up in advance and I need to make more. You don't have to worry about the color matching 100% because we're going to spray it with Glimmer Mist and that's going to change the color anyway. And you want it to look like it's different shades. At least I do anyway. I really like to do these boxes. Hi Cheryl! Was it paint you mixed with the paste? Yes, it was just folk art um, paint. You can use any of these paints. The 77 cent paint at uh, Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby. This color is metallic antique copper, and I just mixed it in with 
the molding paste in a separate little jar that I have half gone. So I keep my jars because I've ruined more little bowls and things. I mean cheap little bowls like from the dollar store or whatever but still. The molding paste is made by Liquitex. This is what the molding paste looks like. And um, get it at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, or Michael's with your 50% or your 40% off coupon. It's the cheapest way to get it. If you can't find it, I can pick it up for you. Um, but that is the cheapest way to get it. I buy the bigger jars of it because I use it a lot. It's also cheaper if you buy it in bigger quantity, but if you're not gonna, if this is not gonna be something you're gonna like to do, then I would suggest you just get the smaller. And the little the spatula comes from uh, Michaels as well in the art department. You're welcome. Okay, so as you can see. We're pretty well covered all the way around, okay? And that's what we want to be. Now, I, well, I forgot right here. We're going to do just half of this side right here. I'm going to have to stop by the hinges because I'm going to do that part when I open the box, which isn't going to be now until tomorrow. Like I said, the, the biggest part of this is the drying time. This is a project you have to do in stages. Oh, that's cool. Our Hobby Lobby is moving. But it's just moving up the street a little bit. They're putting a, wa a super Walmart where the Hobby Lobby is. It's just crazy the way that we're supposed to be in a recession and buildings are going up and companies are moving and it's kind of crazy. Okay. So now I'm just going to leave that. And like I said, you know what, if you guys don't mind, I want to do this one right away too while I have my paint. Um, what's also good about the spatula is I can just get right underneath that parchment paper and move it around. Yep, that's what I do is I do a few at a time. Like I've got two right here and I've got two half done over there because I needed to show you this in stages. I, you know, I love to go to archivers. In fact, I pretty much when I go there, I walk around and I just take pictures of all the projects. But I think they're so expensive. Um, and you can pretty much get most anything at Archivers, at Michael's or Joann's. They just have a better, a better project um, section, you know, where they show you how they've used things, where Michael's and Joann's lack that. Our Michael's and Joann's are um, not very good at doing classes and things like that. Actually, um, the manager at Michael's has approached me several times asking me to do classes for them. But, you know, they just, they don't pay very well, first of all. They don't want to give you a discount on anything more so than what they're already offering. Um, it just, I don't see where there's any kind of perks at all. Ooh, Sue, that's not fun. These little itty bitty boxes are fun because they go really fast and kids like them. Um, just like to put, I know one of my friends, her daughter I, that I did one for uses it for a box for the Tooth Fairy. Um, another one uses it to put lunch money in before she goes to work in the morning and then the kids just go in and grab their lunch money so it's not just laying on the counter and ending up on the floor. Um, I think it's cool like for a little jewelry box for just, you know, a young girl for a couple pairs of earrings, you know, nothing really big. 
I don't know. I really like to online shop, so I, I say it really wouldn't bother me too much, but I know that it would. <laughs> if there weren't a store here, but we have we have everything. We have hobby. The only thing we don't have that you all talk about so much is uh, big lots. We don't have a big lots. And I've never been lucky like a lot of you have um, with TJ Maxx. I know a lot of you say that, you know, you go to TJ Maxx and you get these awesome scrapbooking deals. That's not happened for me. You don't have to worry about this drying too quickly either, so if you want to go back and change anything, you have plenty of time to do it. All right, bye. Love you. Love you too. So you just... Well, that's good. If you can find deals, that's what it's about. So, oh, I love you too, Bonnie. <laughs> Ray's going to play cards. All right, does anybody have any questions? Yeah. No, he doesn't play for big money like that. It's not like a poker thing. It's more like just eating pizza and playing cards. Ooh, Tuesday morning. We have a Tuesday morning, but it's a little far from us. But again, I've, I've been in there maybe only once or twice. Never, never have seen any kind of scrapbooking stuff. And the dollar stores that everybody, you know, Froggy talks about a 99 cent store that they have. It's a sent me some gorgeous, gorgeous laces and ribbons from there. Um, we don't have one of those either. Yes, Shy, that's exactly what they do. We have dollar stores. We have like the Dollar Tree and the Family Dollar. And they do have, that's where I get those notepads that I work on a lot. But um, nothing else. They don't have like a scrapbooking section or anything where I know a lot of you girls say you get some really great stuff from there. So I guess it really just depends on the area. When basketball season starts and we start traveling, I always run around, you know, into all the stores there because it's fun to see the different things that everybody has. Okay, so both of these are done. I just stuck my finger in it. So as you can see, well, I don't know if you can see or not, but I still got a good amount in there, like for maybe another couple of small ones. I'm just going to cover it back up and save this. For use later. Um, I'm going to get up and put my spatula in the water and move this over to my counter to dry. So give me one second and I will be right back. That when a man's watching TV, they feel the need to leave it on when they leave. I don't understand. And then 
to leave it on as loud as they do. <laughs> All right, let me see if there's any questions. How much paint did you use? Um, I used about a quarter of this. And molding paste, this was brand new opened, and this is about how much molding paste I used. So about a quarter of the molding paste for, for a medium size and a small size box. And a quarter of the paint. Now the paint, it really depends on what color you're trying to achieve. So um, a, a little bit goes a long way too. Now you saw I, I pretty much gooped mine up pretty well, and that's because I like it like that. I like it like that. Okay, now, here's one that's done, okay? It's dry, so I can do what I want with it. Now, the small one, as you can see in the center, on this one, I did not put molding paste. And the reason I didn't is because the smaller the area you're working with, it's harder to, to maneuver. So, I thought it looked really cool. All I did was I took my Sugar Maple Glimmer Mist, I'm going to try not to get this everywhere now because I'm not working the way I should be. I squirted a couple times inside here. Okay. And then just take my paintbrush, and this is the part where I do my edges here. And the inside of the box getting in those corners. Okay, and around the taps and the sides. And as I said before, I go right over the hinges. I'm not worried about that. Okay? And then same thing, you're just, you're going to let that dry. But this is pretty much done. Now, these little areas where you can tell that I missed, see these areas? That's where you're going to take that paintbrush and you're just going to dab at it with the glimmer mist. In fact, you can go over the whole thing with the glimmer mist. Here's the um, bubble light green. I just don't want to get this all over my computer. Okay, and you're just doing stuff like this. And you can see how it changes the effect. I did do the inside of the larger one with the molding paste. I'm going to show you that next because that's the one we're actually going to be making. And that's the one I did for, I'm, I'm going to embellish and finish all up right now for Colleen. Okay, so see the areas that look like I had missed, I just went over, I sprayed the glimmer mist on it and just went over it with my brush and it looks great. Okay? So I might even have time to embellish this one too. In fact, there's a little spot right here. Okay. Okay. So see, it looks it looks fine now. And you can you know touch up wherever you think you need to touch up. I think it looks it looks pretty good now as it is. All right, so this is a smaller of the two. I just wanted to show you how to do the inside just by using um, Glimmer Mist. The green is bubble light green. I can get you Glimmer Mist if you need Glimmer Mist as well. Um, for any of the colors. I have a ton of glim Glimmer Mist and I, I personally need to just start using mine a little bit more. I, I'm not very good at that. Okay, so this one I'm going to put off to the side. Here's the one I'm making for Colleen, and I did put the Glimmer Mist and the molding paste on the inside as well. So here's the outside of the box. Okay, I've got a couple spots here now that I'm either going to need to touch up with um, molding paste or Glimmer, glimmer Mist. Whatever you want to do is fine. Now, this is still a little bit wet, so I'm just going to dab at it with my paintbrush. What I'm going to do with those areas, because this is the box I want to be able to embellish with you girls tonight, I'm going to leave those and 
when I'm done embellishing it, I'm going to dab it with some more molding paste because this is too too much of an area and it's um, it will attract your eye right away because it's the front of the box. So I want to put more uh, molding paste there. But I'm going to embellish the box first, get it all done, and then all it will have to do is dry with that little bit on there. And as you can see, I've also got to do this spot here where the hinges are. Um, and again, you just have to be really careful because you want this box to be able to do this. If it doesn't do this, you're not going to get it closed and it's not going to latch. So be careful when you're applying your um, molding paste around there. I totally forgot about that part or I would have had that done already. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to embellish this. And as you can tell, take note here, there's no molding paste. And that's why this box is closing fine. Okay? So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to latch it. Okay, so it's latched. This is the one I'm going to make for Colleen. I'm going to come up with something. Um, for, I have a Viva Decor giveaway that I, I want to do. I just have to get it all together to show you guys what it is. Um, and then I want to ask you all if, if you feel like making something for Colleen now like you did for BJ. And I thought um, I'd give you like three weeks to do that. And then I have some Cherry Lindice for um, the month of November for Thanksgiving. Um, actually, the crumbs aren't from this box, Martha. They're from the boxes that were on here before. It's not, I, I don't think it's doing anything from this box. No. I think it's fine. Um, you probably could spray it with some kind of a, of a sealer. I never really thought of that. And this box... I've had forever on my um, on my hutch over there, and it's look, nothing's coming off of this. I think this is still drying too. So once it's a hundred percent dry, it's going to be fine to go as well. It's just got to have a little bit more drying time. Okay, so here's what I thought I would use some Cherry Lynn stuff on this, and I cut out. Two of the doilies. I've got this one. Where's the front of the box now, right here? All right, I've got this one. I'm just playing around now. I got home really late tonight, so I think Ray's trying to get me to not be missing the boys so much, especially after they've been here for the weekend now, and I've been working really late. So I'm just going to, I kind of had my supplies ready, but I don't really like to create on the fly, <laughs> which is what I'm doing. All right. So I'm just poking through some of the holes that were not poked out on here. This look, actually looks really good. So as you can tell, a lot of this is going to be covered up now anyway. So when I go back to do the molding paste, I'll know what needs to be done. I'm just checking all the holes these um, to make sure that they were all punched out when I die cut it. I'm just going through it with my toothpick here. And this is the Cherry Lynn Italian Flourish and Fres Fre French Pastry Die, which are both on my blog. I couldn't say that. All right, I'm just going to kind of lay this out and see how I'm going to like it. I like these two together, obviously, because one's smaller than the other, so it fits really nice inside for a nice layered look. I have my butterfly. I'm working upside down here now. I can put there. Good, Cindy. I'm so glad. Cindy messaged me so upset one day that she had purchased some other kind of a dye from somewhere instead of a cherry lin and she couldn't get it to work and she was so upset and she bought the French pastry dye from me and I don't think I ever asked you and I'm glad you told me um, how much you like it good okay 
There really is a difference in the dyes, you guys. Um, Cherry Lynn is affordable, and I really do believe they are top of the line. So don't try something else because it's cheaper or because you think it's better. Try Cherry Lynn first, and you won't be sorry you did. I'm going to put this little um, quote on here, and it says, Listen to what your heart is saying. I'm going to put that right there. Um, do you guys think that looks okay? And I'm going to put some flowers over here. <laughs> yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to chalk my doilies. Let's do this first. I like to kind of layer my stuff, lay it all out and everything before putting it down just because I don't want to have an issue. All right, I'm going to have to do this one brown. Um, I'm using my Tim Holtz Distress Inks Vintage Photo here, just with a cosmetic sponge. Oops. And I'm just going to go over the edges of the doily. all the way around. Right. Where is everybody? Bluebell's not here, Jerry Ann, Tony, It's a uh, Froggy. All right, thank you girls for coming. I'm happy all of you are here. Susan's not here, I see. All right, so we got that. And then I'm going to take um, the Pine Needles Distress Ink. And actually, I'm going to put a little bit of that in here as well. I'm going to just kind of do two colors here. <laughs> All right, and Kristen, where's Kristen? Okay, then I'm going to take the pine needles and I'm going to put it on the brown, which is just going to really darken it up and put a different shading in on it, which I really like that. Okay. Same here. Okay, so you really can't see too much of the green underneath, so I'm going to pull it out a little bit. I forgot I was going to be covering that. It does look like the old-time doilies that Grandma used to make. All right, so as you can see, uh, inking that has distressed it well enough to make it blend better with the box. And because I put the green and the brown in, in the box, to pull it out of the doilies is just going to make it look awesome as well. I'm going to pull this back out here, and I'm going to do this butterfly real fast. And I'm going to do a couple of the cutie dyes. Cutie flowers. I love those flowers. You guys, um, with basketball season starting, and Ray and I are going to be traveling around to see Ryan play as much as we can, one of two things is going to happen. Either if I can't find someone to come to my home and take care of my dogs, one of my kids, meaning Adam or Ray, to come home, I'll be home and I'll be doing more shows or I'm going to be doing a lot more on YouTube and posting videos up for you guys on days when I am home and popping on spur of the moment type thing, not necessarily on Thursdays, just depending on what I can do. So I'll keep you informed of that. And in fact, next Thursday I will not be streaming uh, because I just have a meeting that I have to attend and I'm not going to be back in time. 
if I'm able to, I will um, get on over the weekend instead. Okay, so here is the QD2 die. And I've already, you guys have all seen me do this. I've already adhered two strips together to the point where they're going in between petals like you're supposed to do them. And I'm just going to ink. I'm putting the dark vintage photo over this. And I'm not just going over the edges, but the whole thing because I want this to be a little darker. I always behave, Martha. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to ink these up good. This is the cutie 2 with two strips. And then I have a cutie 4. <laughs> This is a cutie four, and I've got three strips. And while I've got it out, I'm going to ink that as well. Oh, that's fine that that just ripped like that too, because that um, gluing it together is going to be just perfect. And actually, I'm going to be using a strip and a half anyway. So, oops, sorry, I'm out of camera here. The Cutie 4 is a lot of fun. Wait till you see this one put together. It's a little bit more work, but sometimes with more work, like I tell the kids, it pays off in the end result. So when I had my boys home this past weekend, I was so happy. And it was, it was fun because <clears throat> Adam is in full blown into student teaching right now. So he's seeing what it's like. He's getting to teach classes. He's teaching high school and middle school. He comes in and he asks me, he saw my mummy bars and my, um, you know, the candy bars that I made at my last show. He's like, oh, cool, Mom. Could you make those for my my a couple of my classes? Well, I'm thinking, you know what, the kid wants, wants something like that. How fun. Sure. I can do that. How many do you need, Adam? And he says, well, I have four classes of about 32 kids. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, I don't think so. Well, I'm going to try to make them all those Hershey bars. I'm going to go with the mummy, I think. He wants to pass one out to each one of the kids that comes into class that day at the high school. So if I can get them all done, I will. If not, you know, whatever I get done, I'm going to use myself for trick-or-treaters. So we'll see if I can get that done. I gave Erica a whole box of candy that we made, the suckers and uh, um, all the rest, the little treat pouches and everything for her to give, give away at their house for trick-or-treaters. They have a lot of kids in the neighborhood. He's at school. He's not going to be able to help me. So he's full He's got such a rough schedule right now. Um, Thursdays, he goes to class until 9 o'clock at night, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, he's at the school all day teaching. So he's got a tough, he's going to graduate on time, which is amazing because he's going to graduate with um, a major, a minor, and a teaching certificate. So he's doing really well. Oh, trouble just walked in. <laughs> Oh, I mean, hi, Susan. <laughs> okay. Um, Cindy, when we do the, the QD4, I'm going to show you how to, how to do that. But here's the QD2. And what I did was I glued the two strips together. And now I'm using my tweezers from my um, McGill set that you can get from Shy. These. And if you are interested, just ask Shy. Okay, so I'm gonna, just going to use my tweezer and I hold it at the end and you're going to roll towards the, if this is double sided paper, you want to roll the paper, the pattern paper side in. Okay, so the important thing about when you're working a cutie die, 
is you want to keep this even down at the bottom. Okay? So you don't want to start going like this. You want to keep the line even. I'm not looking at the chat right now because I want to make sure my line is even. So if you have a question, hold on one second. And if you're being naughty, behave. I really like using the tweezers for this. I've used a toothpick, I've used a quilling tool, I've used all kinds of things. And the tweezers is just so easy to hold on to and maintain that circle. Now I'm talking and I'm getting off my circle. Alright, so you just want to keep going. I'm almost at the end. And remember, the really cool thing about the Cherry Lynn Cutie dies, you can make these as big or as small as you want. You only have to use two to make one flower, or you can use four or five, however long you want it, however big you want the flower to be. Alright, so there's my end, which I have glued, and I'm just going to hold it. And this is what you want your bottom to look like. Alright, and then all I'm going to do is reach in there and pull my tweezers out. And here's my flower. Okay. And I'm just squeezing it a little bit. I want that glue to take hold. Alright, so there's that. And awesome Cherry Lynn cutie dies, you guys. Just pull the petals down a little bit and you have a beautiful flower. And you can get these um, dies on my blog, which is because every picture has a story to tell. Blogspot.com. Okay, look at amazing. And you saw me do it. One, two, three, done. All right, so I'm just going to do this. Now I'm going to do another one. So pay attention if you missed the first time. Tweezers at the very end and roll. Staying on that line. Oops, sorry if I went off. You want to try to keep that as round as you can? You guys, I see that there's more of you coming in. I just want to say hello, but I'm sorry, my chat does not show me who's all here. So I'm not trying to be rude. I'm welcoming all of you. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, so I'm at the end, and I'm going to use my glossy accents. Now I'm embellishing this box for Colleen with handmade things. These boxes, obviously, you can embellish with anything you like. The little I think I'll do the little box when I'm done with this one. It'll just take seconds. The embellishing of the boxes is super easy, super fun, super fast. Okay? Um, the work comes in the molding paste, the drying time and all that. So I'm using handmade stuff on this, on this box for Colleen. Oh, my glue came undone. Not a big deal. But I'm going to show you how you can also use flowers that you just buy at Hobby Lobby or wherever and you can embellish quick and easy and you have a, a fun, fast gift as well. So if you, if you get these boxes and you get them on sale and you get the molding paste and you want to do them up, do them all at one time. You don't have to embellish them right away. And what's, what's fun about it is embellish them all a little bit later and then they take really seconds to do. Okay, now this one opened up a little bit more and that's okay because flowers are all different, right? And I'm going to hot glue on there. Now, here's the fun one. This is a lot of fun. It's a little bit of work, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do here now is, alright, I cut out three. Now I ripped this one. Not a big deal. I'm just going to glue it back together. Not to worry. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run the glue right up my strip. I'm 
I'm going to use the one that I just glued. Same thing now. You're just putting opposite petals against opposite petals, putting them in the space. I'm going to hold it up and show you. Okay? So you want every other one to have a petal. Every other one. Okay? Cindy, this one is a lot of fun too. You're going to like this. I'm thinking I might have an extra one here. I cut these out a few at a time, so sometimes I have more than one. I don't. Okay, so we're good to go. Now what we want to do, because I'm just using three strips, it is tall, but wait till you see what I do. Okay, so now to use three strips, remember you have to work in even numbers. So because I'm cutting out just three strips, I'm going to cut this third strip in half and glue that together. Okay, like this. Same exact way. Every other. Okay, and then glue it together. Now this is going to take a second to dry because I've got a couple, I've got that broken piece in there and I've got this one. So I just want to hold it a second and I'm pressing. <sighs> Colleen is the owner of Viva Decor who gave me all the Viva Decor to give away at the bingo and I have another Viva Decor giveaway to do. But I got home really late from work tonight so I wasn't able to get everything out to show you what's in it. There's a stamp set, there's some pearl pens. I have a Viva Decor giveaway for you. And I thought we could make another project for Colleen. And I'm going to ask that um, it be sent to me. Let's see, today's what? The 8th? How about, or no, today's not the 8th, it's the 11th. Yes, you can participate whether you want or not. Absolutely. Um, I don't know, I need somebody to help me look. What's the first week of November? the end what's the Friday the first you know what you guys I have to look at the basketball schedule too though because if Ryan has a game I'm not going to be able to do the show that weekend to see who won but I'm going to give away the Viva Decor the first week of November let me look at the schedule and then um, I have two Cherry Lynn dies for fall to give away at the end of November so we're going to do something else for that. I don't know if it's going to be a game, if anybody has any ideas. Okay, yeah, November 2nd, Ryan has a game. So November 4th, okay, let's see, November 3rd, November 4th would be a Sunday. What's the second week of November? Or you know what? Why don't we say they have to be to, be, be to me by Friday, November second and November 4th is when I would do the show. Okay, let's talk about that in a sec. I'm doing the same thing here now. Okay? This is the white side of the paper. This is the pattern side. I'm rolling pattern side in. Same exact thing. Rolling, staying on that line, keeping it circular at the bottom. Yeah, so let's say that the make something for Colleen, again, fall related. I don't care if it's the same thing you already made. Um, if you want to participate, it has to be to me by November 2nd. I'll take a picture of um, what I have to give away. It's an awesome, awesome Viva Decor giveaway. I'll split it up into three, just like I did the Cherry Lynn. So we'll do three winners again. Does that work? Okay, so tweezers come out. Now, hi Barb. I'm sorry, Bluebell. I'm just doing the box again anyway. You've seen me do it. And Bluebell actually has one of my boxes. I see there's more of you coming in and I'm glad. Froggy! Hi, Froggy! I just was saying I was missing you girls. Okay, Cindy. Cindy made the comment. Look how tall it is. Yes, it is. Okay, 
Um, I just because you girls just came in, I want you to keep watch over at my blog. I'm doing a Viva Decor giveaway for Colleen, from Colleen, and we're going to do a project again for Colleen, just like we did BJ with three winners. I'll take a picture of what I have to give away, um, but it's going to be the same thing. You have to have your project to me by November 2nd. November's an awesome month, isn't it, Bonnie? Is Bonnie still here? Who else has a, I have a birthday in November. Who else has a birthday? I know Bonnie has a birthday in November. I think that's why I love fall. Anyway, girls, this is the box that we're making. And this one is coming apart. I'm going to have to redo this one. And look, it's not a big deal. We just redo it. But I want to show you this first. Okay, so because these are so tall, if I just start pulling them down, which you can, it's going to be a humongous flower, and I don't want that on this little project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each petal, and I'm going to curl it down and let go. See what I did? Thank you, Barb. I loved making it. And the one, I, I showed everyone the one of me and my boys. That's my favorite thing. I love that box. It's a forever thing. You can have it by you forever. And you just keep doing this. You go all the way around this flower. And I'm trying to do it as close to the camera as I can. Just at the out, you start with the, the layer of petals that's next for you to grab. And it's real easy to see. You just keep doing this. Uh oh, here we go now. All the girls are coming in. And Did you guys think I was on at 7? Instead of 6.30? I'm not going to be on next Thursday either, you guys, because I have something I have to do. But I might try to get on either earlier in the week, depending on, you know, I don't want to interfere with Susan and Jerry Ann's class time. It might be the weekend. <laughs> There's worse nicknames you could have, Susan. Okay, Cindy, so see what's happening here? All the petals are coming down, and the flower is not looking so tall, and it looks like a real flower. Isn't this fun? So you can get several different looks. I'm going to pull this in now by me because, for one, my arm's starting to hurt me, and for two, got to see what I'm doing. You can get several looks from this one die. You can just separate the petals like I did on the QD2, or you can... Oh, you guys, do you hear my dog? He's dreaming in his sleep. Can you hear him? Can you hear him? Oh, he sounds so cute. He's probably dreaming about a steak or something because that's all he likes to do is eat. He's dreaming about a steak he can't get to on the counter. <laughs> look at look at this flower, you guys! Isn't this awesome? Look at how easy this is. It takes a little bit more time, but it turns out awesome. And you just keep going layer by layer inside at each petal, and you can just tell, because the ones that are pointing up, you just grab and turn under. Oh, and all the prizes were mailed out, just so you all know. Um, not to the girls who participated, though. I have to place an order with Cherry Lynn. I gave everybody a um, die that participated in the giveaway for BJ, whether they won or not. I, I'm placing that order. So if anyone wants anything from Cherry Lynn, be sure to let me know, because I have an order going in. 
all right? And it, Cherry Lynn sends me their order, you know, like I get it within like three or four days. So I'll be able to get it right out to you. But you all pretty much should have gotten your prizes from the last time too, the candy bars, the mummy bars, and the frog toad bar things. And treat goodie bags. I'm not looking at the chat, you guys, so if you have a question, type up in blue so it grabs my attention. All right. So here we are so far. <laughs> I am afraid. These girls are so much fun. If you're watching the recording and you can get to a live show, you really should. Fun, fun girls. Okay. All right, so there it is. Settle down, Susan. All right, so, oh, okay. So look at the difference in the size of those flowers now. Yes, Froggy. Yep, that's exactly what you do, Cheryl. Wow, Bluebell, that's awesome. Hi, Froggy. Did you have a question? You're like screaming at me. All right, I'm going to re-roll this one because it came undone. And see when something happens, how easy it is to fix. Yeah, that's the problem. If you work in a craft store or, or a fun store, you're going to be working and spending your paycheck in that same store. That's why when Michaels is asking me to teach, I'm like, yeah, sure. Okay, I'll do that. And then I'll spend what, the little bit of money that they want to pay me. Oh shoot, no. I lost my little pin. And those of you who are looking for a job, and you have Michaels by you, and, and you want to do that, you want to work at Michaels, ask your people at Michaels if they're hiring. There's signs up all over mine for scrapbook instructors. I love archivers. They're just so expensive. But what's your discount at archivers? Do you know? Do you know what the discount is there if you work there? <laughs> huh. See, my um, archivers is about 30, 40 minutes away from my home, so it's not, it's not worth it. All right, I have to turn this facing me now, guys. Sorry. But I want to embellish it the way that I'm supposed to. I'll show it to you, obviously, before I glue anything down. So I'm just going to put a little cluster of the flowers. All right, this is what I've got so far. I've got a stick pen and I'm going to, sure, I'm going to put some pearls on it. One. I can't keep hold of these things.
I'm working on the angel books. Uh, the angel tags are, I still have a few available over on my blog if you're interested in taking a look at those angel kits. They're amazing. Actually, I think I'm going to do Drop the Pearl. Yep, that's what I'm doing. My hands are a little sticky. I should have washed them. All this glue and molding paste. I'm going to go opposites here. All right, I kind of like that. I'm going to put a big one here on the bottom. Ray must be busy at work. He didn't pop in and say hi to us. I like to put a little dab of glue on my very last pearl on my um, stick pin just to hold it in place a little better. We're supposed to get rain Saturday and Sunday as well. All right, so we're going to put that there. I love these little birds from Hobby Lobby. I think I'm going to put maybe the bird. Put the bird in there like that. Let me see. I'm just kind of trying to lay this out before I glue it down. I can't keep a hold. I've got the dropsies. I've got the dropsies. All right. I got these really cool little um, charms. They're they're called charms, I guess. They're leaves. I'm gonna see how they look here. I have to use my wire cutters, though, or I'll get yelled at. I'm just pulling the charm part off because I want to use it as an embellishment, not as a charm. And I'm doing that with my wire cutters, not my scissors, because you don't want to ruin your scissors. Okay. So I have this one, and I can stick that underneath. Oh, pretty. Look it. Works perfect by those little cuties. I'm going to tuck it under a little more. I've got another one here. I use this one. And all I'm doing is pulling this charm off with my wire cutter. I'm not throwing it on the floor. I have a garbage can here by me. And we'll hang this one here. And then I got a little gift in the mail from somebody, and I can't remember who it was, but I got all these little doodads. So let's see what we got. We already have a butterfly, so we don't want to use that. We don't want to use the bird cage. There's a key here. Oh, I got a pretty heart with a bird on it. Where can we tuck that? We could probably tuck that in here. Let's see? Oh, now this might be cute to put on top of the little box. So let's see what we got here. Cup and saucer. I don't really like that. Got a few other things. Scissors. All right, I think we're going to go with this. <clears throat> How's this look, ladies? Does that look okay? Because I'm going to start to glue it down if everybody thinks it looks all right. Should I put another um, cutie flower over here, or do you think it looks fine as it is? I don't want to tip it up because it's all going to fall down. I have a burgundy. Ah, I know what I can do. I'm going to adhere pearls. All right. Oh, hello, Kristen. All right, I'm going to take this all apart now. And I'm going to get to gluing. And my adhesive of choice when working with these boxes is hot glue. 
Okay. So, Hack Lou has the least amount of um, ability to come up off of this. Now, I like to put the hack glue right in the center of the doilies because I like the way when you press down in the center that it puckers up in different spots here. So I put a glob of hot glue in the middle and I'm just going to hold it. I'm not going to use the Viva Decor Pearl Pen only because I actually am trying not to use Viva Decor on this for her because I'm sure she gets so much stuff already with Viva Decor. And that's why I didn't put any Cherry Lynn on uh, BJ's gift. So I just, I want to do this, like this. All right, I'm going to put my hot glue here. And I like for my butterfly to even poke up a little bit like this. Okay. And I'm going to put him down right there. All right. <clears throat> Sorry, Froggy. All right. <clears throat> Need some more glue. What the heck? Don't be afraid to use the hot glue either. Gab it on there if you have to because you don't want the stuff falling off. And you have to just hold it in place a little bit. So the, as you can see, the embellishing part goes super fast. The time comes in the drying of the boxes with the molding paste. But once it's done, it looks amazing. So give it a try. And the molding paste, I want to say, is probably like $11 or so. But you use your coupon and you get a nice amount at a nice cost. All right, I like to make the leaves, as you can see. I like it to look more three-dimensional, so I just put the gap of glue in there and then I, I hold it up. You don't want everything laying flat. Because remember, this is something that uh, is meant to be 3D. Whoops, knocked my hot glue gun over. And what's nice about these cutie dies is because they're up a little bit, you know, they have that base, you can stick things underneath it so it looks really good. All right, the pearl pen is in there, the pearl pin. And then I'm going to stick this heart in there as well. Oh, it's already got some glue. Oh, you can make your own? Well, that's cool. Sh go ahead and share. Share the link or whatever. I don't care. I'm trying to see the best place to put the bird now. If I could hold on to the bird, I'll let you know. Um, who is SA Crafters? I'm still trying to learn everybody's names and stuff, you guys. This is another person that does use streams. How come I don't know any of this? I love these little birds. YouTube. Oh, okay. I love these little birds. The crummy thing is, and I don't know how your Hobby Lobbies work, but my Hobby Lobby here 
I get so upset if I go try to make like some class kits on stuff and I need like six or eight of something. My Hobby Lobby has two, two of everything. You can't, I have to drive around to like three different Hobby Lobbies to try to get everything. It's a pain in the butt. I don't like that. I like to go to the store and I want to get what I want to get all at one time because everybody's always asking, where'd you get that? Well, now I wish I would have put the butterfly down a little bit more. Let me see something. Hold on. Now it looks too plain. Hi, Brenda. I don't like a, I wish this were thicker. Hmm. Hold on. The team is all here, you're right. All right. Yes or no with this thing? I'm waiting for a response here now. Thank you. What do you guys think? No. All right, well, when I put that there, though, it looks too plain. Oh, hello, Zai. Froggy, I still need to mail you that layout, too. I didn't forget. I'm just waiting for a box big enough. It needs something. What does it need? What if I got some gold tool and stuck it in there? All right, hold on. Let me see if I... We've got brown or gold tool. Pop that sucker up. Hold on. Alright guys, I've got some uh, gold tool that I'm going to be using on my angel book. This would be really pretty on there, don't you think? Oh, I like um, feathers too. Let me see something. Hold on. I'm going to try to use this. I don't have, I only have white feathers, and I think that would be too um, drastic. I'm going to try to make one of those little tool thingies, like the sprays that I usually use. And they don't make them in uh, brown. I don't understand that. This, so this has glittery, it's got the bling and everything. So let me try something here. All right, so, and as you can see, I just cut a slappy square. Look at, see what a difference that makes? So that's what we're going to do, put a glob of glue there, and then I just twist it around my thing here, ow, and I burn myself, and then just kind of use a tool and stick it in there. Actually, I want this more to the side. That's better. 
And I'm going to put some pop dots on this. And I'm still I'm going to put pearls along the um, the doily there. So I still got a few things to do there. Hmm, that's too much. I put that butterfly up too high. I wish I would have brought it down further. Yeah, right here, I, I will. I'll stick a little, let me see if I, I'll get a little piece of bling. I can do that. But hold on, I'm wondering. Let me try something here. This is where it's good to have lots of things. Nope. All right. Hold on. Um, yeah, I do too. And I can put more of that over here, but my problem is more in the center. Um, let me see. The other thing I can do is I can use a different word, maybe more square. Let me see what I've got here. Yeah, I need something bigger in the middle there. I've got an idea. Look at these. Aren't these cool? These birds. I can put a bird in the center and put this, still use the same word. Let me see how this is going to look. Hold on, hold on. Um, in fact... Yeah, that would be a good idea, too. Let me try something, though. Uh, that would have to go under. That wouldn't look right. I thought I had an idea there. Well, this at least it looks a little um, better now, don't you think? If I popped at him... Yep. Let me pop dot him. Yeah, these are from Michaels. In the dollar section. Put the metal thing back in there. Do you want me to put it on a pop dot? All right, wait. Oh, wait, how about if I put that gold tool all the way around the metal thingy? Hold on. What about like this? To put this gold stuff coming all the way around this. What do you think? And then put either the bird in the middle or this. Yeah, I'll put the gold tool around it. Let me pop dot it. not enough. Hold on. All right, let's see. Let's pop this sucker up a little bit more. Hmm. 
All right, there, that's nice and popped up. Okay, so let me, I like to put, even though it's adhes already has the adhesive, I like to use the hot glue. And then I'm going to put the gold stuff underneath it. See, isn't it amazing how different it, it looks just by adding a little extra bling or something? Just got to get the hot glue to grab. All right. Look how pretty that is. All right, now do we want to go with the bird in the middle? I think the word is going to look better. This, right? Don't you think that looks nice? Do you guys like the bird or the saying? I kind of like the saying. You like the bird? Bird saying, bird saying. I don't have a blue bird. But this actually works good because it's creamed the box and then it brings out the green and the butterfly. Um, the other one I have, this one, I have the one with the twig. The one with the twig? All right, hold on. I want to see something. Is it too much if I do this, you guys? What if I put the bird like this? Like it's flying? What about that? Okay, blue. Why are we putting blue in there? Yeah, I, well, do you think it's too much because the butterfly is already right there? But it's coming in a different direction. The butterfly looks blue. It's green. It's emerald green. Should I distress it green and show you? Yeah, it's not blue, it's green. It's, it must be the color of um, what's going on with Ustream then, how it's appearing. Let me show you. This is actually what the color of it is. Yeah, it's not. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the saying there. And then I'm going to put the bird there. I'm going to use both. Just the same. Oh, you guys. i got to move it then. Martha's sleeping. <laughs> All right, now 
I do have something that I can do. This is going to be a little tedious, but... <laughs> Let me see something. Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I have just enough. 1, 2, 3, four. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? Who took my tweezers? Hello? Tweezers? Hello? Who took the tweezers? Well, what the heck? Now, I need my tweezers. That is really rude. Hello? Where are the tweezers? I figured it was you, Susan. Here they are, right in front of me. <laughs> All right, here's what I'm going to do. Before the glue dries. So you can get as fancy or as easy as you want with these things. You don't have to make it a big, long project. You can do whatever you want. All right, so I've got these pretty pearls I'm going to put all the way around it, too. Yep. Yeah, that's why I thought tonight was a good night to do a show anyway, even though it's my regular night, because I don't really care to watch that stuff. Everybody knows who they want to vote for pretty much by now and why. I don't really think we need to fight about it. And it's okay if our opinions are different, right? What is the big deal? Yeah, this is enough after this. That's all I'm going to do on this. I'm not putting anything else on it. I think she's going to like it just fine. And look, I've already got my project done. And I usually like to put a little flower or something in the, on the inside of the box as well. So like when you open it up, especially if you're not going to put anything in it for the person, it's kind of nice that the little trinket that you have inside there is then the, then the gift. So I usually put a flower in there. But I may put a butterfly in this one. Okay, one more. All right, guys. What do you think? A flower under the butterfly wing? I really think it has enough on it when you're looking at it in person. Because then it gets a little too crazy. Yes? 
Okay. So then we open it up and on the inside I can either make and put another um, cutie die inside there with this or I can put a little butterfly in there. So what do you think? A flower with a, a leaf or the butterfly? The butterfly? Yeah, I've never really put one in, of those inside yet, so we'll go with the butterfly. And then this box is done, except for the little um, area I have to do in the back there. Okay? So here's the box. The molding paste. I just have to do that part by the hinges, but I wanted to be able to decorate for you tonight. Excuse my arm there. There's something at the table. Okay, I'm going to decorate this super duper fast, and I'm going to give this one away, and I have a couple Halloween things to give away. And now I, I want to show you the reason this one's going to be really fast. I'm not going to make anything. This is all, there's obviously a bunch of handmade stuff on here, which is why it took a little bit longer. I wanted to show you if you wanted something quick and easy after you do the molding paste. I found these flower group things. Look at this. There's another flower. I cut it off, though, for a dollar at Michael's. Now, I think that's, you know, pretty cheap. So, here it is. I cut it off. You can put this on the top. Look it. Okay, put that on the top with... This was a dollar. Three acorns and a bunch of leaves. This might be too big, though, to put on there. Let's try it. Let me ask you guys what you think about this. Um, do you think it looks okay with gold, a gold flower, green leaves, and the acorn? Oh, pine cones, I mean. Yeah, see how simple that is? Or should I give it away like this and you can decorate it yourself? Do you want me to decorate it or do you want... Is it nice to call the broadcaster names, Kristen? It's a pine cone. Wow, she's calling the teacher a name. All right, I can do this or send it to you so you can decorate it yourself and it's already got all the molding paste done on it. Nothing on it? <laughs> I do say ding a -ling. or ding-dong. All right, I'll let whoever wants to embellish it, embellish it. Well, you think you're going to win, eh, Susan? You guys, look at what I found at Staples today. Aren't these fun for breast cancer awareness? It's uh, Susan G. Komen, Fab U Loss. Okay. So the first, um, I have a couple of giveaways then, because then I am done. Everyone saw the box, right, that we finished? Okay. Cool, Cheryl. I like simple things like that, too. And from the yard makes it more special. Okay, so we're going to give this away first, the box. And I'll touch up whatever needs to be touched up on that as well. So, yes, you're just picking one number. And since we have this many people, we're going to go from the first number is going to be between 1 
and 15. Wait until you see the word go. The first one closest without going over wins. Cindy, pick again. Okay, is that everybody? All right, we're going to hit stop. And the winner is number 12. And that's Bonnie. Congratulations, Bonnie. Look at the paper. Even the paper has the cute little lady on it. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Hunter, your mom was off by one number. Can you believe it? All right. I have one more thing. All right, Hunter, start thinking of a number because I'm sending it to you in my head. I'm sending it to you. Okay? So start thinking of a number. And we're going to give away two of the stickers with the glitter. Now wait until I put it in there. Hold on. You have to wait. Listen to Susan. She's screaming at us over here. We're going to pick a number again between 1 and 12. Or I'm sorry, 1 and 15 because we just picked 12. That's why that's on my mind. Now wait. All right, we already have a winner. Hunter, I think your mom typed the wrong number on purpose there. You got number nine, Cindy. Shoot, I should have just waited. Congratulations, Cindy wins. You've got both of these coming. <laughs> Okay, so we got um, Bonnie and Cindy who are our winners tonight. Does anyone have any questions <coughs> in regards to the molding paste or anything? Congratulations, ladies, and I want to thank all of you for coming. I appreciate it. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me or message me over on Facebook. I'm going to run over to Facebook for a little bit. Oh no, Bluebell, what's wrong? Is it the anniversary? I thought so. I'm sorry, Bluebell. Remember the good times and the special memories of so many years together.